Hello, welcome to Cold Club Four Steps School of Heaven Season Tonight. Slow down. <laughs> we are going to discuss some of my latest research and some conclusions I've arrived at that I believe are pretty paramount to understanding what we believe and why we believe it. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. I'll tell you this story like you've never heard it. Your mind and your emotions will want to reject it. Try to refocus and direct your mind to listen to this lesson I'm about to give you. Trust me. We need to talk. We invite your apprehensive listening. We shall begin now. Welcome to Colonel Marsh Air YouTube channel. I'm going to go over some research I've done and post it at profitofwar.home.blog. And this might be an uncomfortable topic for some of you, but we're going to plow through it. Okay, so brief background is I started off studying anthropology from one of my favorite authors was Purdy J. Pelto. And he was pretty adamant about empiricism in research and data collection and when you present your findings. So I went to college and studied anthropology and their main premise was cultural relativism and what they uh, wanted me to do was kind of let go of empiricism and incorporate uh, politics into my research and my papers because politics is the fundamental way that anthropologists get funding from the public to perform more research. If you don't make people happy, you don't get funding. So uh, after meeting with the head of the Department of Sociology and Anthropology, where she informed me I needed to be more political, I walked off campus and never went back. Uh, I wasn't going to waste my life to become um, a salesman for ideas that aren't true. So some of my recent research papers that I've presented on the website just posted this one today, trying to research ancient calendars. Seems like an easy topic, right? There's been a lot of discoveries. You should be able to just Wikipedia this and have a list of ancient calendars. I, f I found that that's not the case. Some of you may not know that uh, anthropology actually has an international anthropological archive, and in order to access the information contained in it, you need to be either a published, peer-reviewed anthropologist scientist type or you need to be in the academic circles either as a student or professor or something like that. Uh, I think there's an, op an option that you can actually pay a monthly fee to get into it uh, which I've never looked at. The, the key element of that whole thing is you have to be part of the inner circle to have access to the information or you have to pay money and now you can pay eighty dollars and get one research paper. You can do that if you want. I mean, 80 to 100 something dollars for one paper. And it's going to be very specialized and very specific to whatever that person is theorizing. And I say theorizing because you can't publish a paper without presenting theoretical relevance. So, in that sense, data is often redefined and manipulated in order to fit a theoretical premise. So trying to research ancient calendars, my first stop was Wikipedia because that's the easy way to go. Now they say most ancient societies use a lunar solar calendar. I haven't seen any evidence for that so I wanted to dive into that. Uh, it's, it's a strong statement with no references. They just say most ancient societies use a lunar solar calendar with no references, no proof, no evidence. So I had to go find some evidence for myself. And I'm thinking ancient societies, well, Philippines is one of the most ancient. So I googled Philippines ancient calendar and I got inundated with nothing more than people's opinions and assumptions. But they all referenced pre-colonial Filipinos. 
So I looked up pre-colonial Filipino calendar systems. Um, their proof that the Filipinos used a lunisolar calendar is from the Laguna copper plate inscription. It was found in the Philippines and it associates the Filipinos with Vedic astrological system of Southeast Asia. The problem is that Laguna copper plate is from 900 AD. That's not ancient. I mean, some people think that's ancient. That's not ancient. That's not a source code. So I read a document by William Henry Scott about some calendars of northern Luzon and he references uh, Barton, Cole, T. Jenks, Lambrecht, Vanoberg. So what I do is I try to find out where is this information coming from? What is the theoretical basis of their arguments? If someone references someone else, I don't look at the references. I look at who was referenced. So I go and I look up Barton. And Barton, Roy F. Barton, from 1883 to 1947, was a self-trained and self-styled ethnographer. He used autobiographical narratives to represent native voices. Okay, so first of all, what, you, what you're seeing is he wasn't, he never got a, a diploma or a degree in anthropology, which is okay because at the time there, there was barely an anthropological field at the time. Um, but what he's doing is he's incorporating autobiographical narratives into ethnography. And that opens up a whole plethora of problems of a cultural relativistic understanding. When you employ cultural relativism, you lose the empirical data. And really what you find out is more about the person writing the ethnography and their culture and their understanding of culture, which is very self-centric, and you learn more about that than you do about the culture they're representing. And so, but he did a lot of cool work. So I wanted to find out something about him. He did some pretty interesting things. Uh, he wrote the book Ifugao La, and it is a scholarly accepted piece that is a bedrock of ethnology. That caught my attention. Okay, this isn't just some self-styled, self-produced ethnographer. His work is a basis and is a reference point. So the names that influenced him in his journey, Alfred Kroeber, T.T. Waterman, Robert Lowy, Max and Paul Radin, and Waldemar Bogoris, who was a USSR uh, ethnologist in Russia. So Alfred Kroeber, first name, first Google, is an American cultural anthropologist. He received his PhD under Franz Boas at Columbia University in 1901. It was the first doctorate in anthropology awarded by Columbia. Okay, so let's look who's, who's Franz Boas. Are you seeing what I'm doing? The first guy referenced Barton, who referenced Louis Krober, who referenced Franz Boas. It's a trail of information. Where did the theoretical premise come from? So Franz Boas founded Boasian Anthropology. And Boasian, in, okay, first of all, I'm going to skip the ethnology of Franz Boas until the end. Boasian anthropology is an influential movement in anthropology originating with Franz Boas. It had various influences outside of anthropology, which is one of the main tenets of anthropology today. They don't just want to present information, they want to guide the evolution of culture. That's part of when you go to college and learn anthropology, that's what you learn, how to influence people. Important aspects include race denialism and attacks on Western culture and civilization. Those are strong statements. Ignore. Boasian anthropology merged in the 20th century at Columbia. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> influential students of Boaz included Ashley Montague, Margaret Mead, Ruth Benedict, Alexander Goldenweiser, Melville Herskovitz, Alfred Kroeber. Right, and the list goes on. He was a socialist and most of his followers were political radicals. Okay, here, here you go. Here's where you start paying attention. He's an anthropologist. He's supposed to be presenting empirical evidence about cultures and ancient people, but he's a socialist and a political radical. Okay, so Boasian anthropology has been highly criticized. 
um, for being a cohesive political movement centered around a charismatic leader, predominantly ethnically Jewish, strongly strongly supporting the interests and careers of one another, intolerant of dissent or criticism, and applying a double standard to critics and supporters regarding empirical evidence. Now that list can just as easily be applied to Kabbalah mysticism and Judaism today. Centered around a charismatic leader, predominantly ethnically Jewish, strongly supporting the interests and careers of one another, intolerant of dissent or criticism. If you look at the, the Kabbalah wisdom of the sages and how to, how to honor sages, you find that they do not tolerate dissent or criticism of the sages. If you're a student, you do what you're told, you believe what you're told, you don't imply anything and you don't ask questions. Applying a double standard to critics and supporters, well that's exactly, it's the Jew-Gentile paradigm. Right? So, and the double standard regarding empirical evidence is they will not tell you, if you're not in the inner circle, what the actual truth is, and if you ask them a, a foundational question, they'll give you the scholarly accepted answer, they won't tell you what they actually know. That's Judaism. Okay? Now, Mead and Benedict were not openly Jews, although Benedict may have been of Jewish descent. They've been argued to have become the most publicly visible of Boaz's students. Um, Boaz, like Freud, which is interesting, he was also Jewish, have been argued to have deliberately recruited and publicly promoted some Gentiles out of concern that his Jewishness would make his science appear partisan and thus compromised. So he wasn't he wasn't recruiting people based on their intellect or ability, he was recruiting them for political concerns. That's concerning. So, uh, Boazian anthropology is where uh, they, they really emphasize cultural relativism. So when you go to college today and learn anthropology and learn about cultural relativism, which they will shove down your throat and tell you not to question it, came from the Jews. You see, you see in anthropology the same prevalence of Judaic principles that leads to relativism that is prevalent in astronomical science that relies on the Jewish paradigm of the theory of relativity. Is that a strong statement? No, because anywhere you look, that's what you're going to find. So I couldn't get into ancient calendars without instantly being obstructed by politics, couldn't find out who Barton was for a long time because of politics. And also I was obstructed by this underlying Jewish set of principles. I will continue this course of study and hopefully find some cohesive information that leads to something farther back than early ADs uh, and that doesn't instantaneously say Sumer provided the first calendar because we all know that is not correct. It's frustrating and I'm going to wade through it. Now I'm going to point out some basic facts. And if you look at my paper on uh, heliocentrism and gravity, you see the same predominance of Judaistic principles that guided the science. Uh, you look at my paper, History Which Narrative, uh, you see the same thing. So, um, what I've discovered is when you want to look up something and find out facts, just empirical facts, every time what you're going to find is research that refers to people, they brush over the origin of the theories and the ideas and the principles, and they just tell you this is a commonly accepted fact, and then they give you all this stuff that makes no sense and doesn't fit the narrative. And you're supposed to just believe it because it's science. So. <clears throat> What I've found is every time when you track back the people of influence in the field of science, you find, so far I've found four or five uh, specific fields of science that were founded by Jews who promoted Jewish principles and were very racist. <laughs> okay, so I want I want to talk about that for a second. I wrote some papers here. Jew is not a nationality, and by, own, by their own admission, because Jews also founded genealogical research, by their own admission, people claiming to be Jews, most of them are not actually Semitic. 
So if you're not Semitic, then if someone talks about you, they're not being anti-Semitic. That's, that's science. So basic facts, everyone seems to be intent on just believing what they're told to believe. And then they'll parrot it, they'll repeat it because they feel smart, right? Pointing out that Jews founded the sciences and claiming that they had a set of principles that guided them to force us all into a knowledge box is not anti-Semitic. Jews are not Semitic. This is proven with their own genealogical research. Judaism is a lifestyle based on principles, not a nationality. It is not a race. It is not a lineage. It is a belief system. So get that through your head and stop just believing what you're told to believe. So I wanted to make this video as a test because my buddy and I, Sean, we're working on a series of videos that we want to do that talk about our experiences in just doing what the Bible says and finding out what it actually says. Because the English that we're given and the hundreds of years of church doctrine and Judaism doctrine that have been presented as biblical facts are not in the Bible. Um, so that's why I started this research into ancient calendars. I just wanted to lay out some basic facts about calendars. But I got stonewalled by Judaism. So I have to dig and put out more effort than I should have to. I should be able to just wiki ancient calendars and have a list of ancient calendars. It doesn't happen. So, um, hopefully this is going to be a turning point in the future of the website, prophetofwar.home.blog, and also of this YouTube channel, because I hope to provide better videos than I have in the past with uh, a little more emotional flair and uh, better facts and, and references. So if you take the time and look something up, find out where it came from, who influenced it, who originated the concept that we are all told is fact, most of the time you will find Jewish principles as the basic bedrock of modern science, every field. And it's something anyone can do. And if you stop going into it instantly assuming that what you've been told about Jews is true, you'll start to see the paradigm that has been forced on us. Now, this is not anti-Semitic. They've done a really good job coercing the whole world to agree with them. I mean, it's fantastic work, really. But they're wrong, and they're lying to us because we're Gentiles. You know? I mean, that's, that's how, it, unless you're in the inner circle, you don't get to know. So, um, look forward to future videos, and be on the lookout for what me and my buddy are going to produce. It's going to be informative and more entertaining, and more interesting and more useful than what I've put out. And uh, be blessed and bless. Yahoo will bless you. Have a nice day.